how to successfully manage the expectations between your business and the customer. G'day viewers, it's Jeff McFeast Gardening, Melbourne, Australia. I've seen so many contractors and I have been guilty of the same thing when I first started was to not communicate successfully with my customer. I see a lot of customers that get overwhelmed or sorry, underwhelmed of the work that's been provided because there hasn't been any communication of what the end result will look like. I hear and see a lot of comments on forums and hear it day to day. The contractor says, this customer is just, don't go near them, they're hopeless, they're always whinging. Now, sure, there will be occasions where it wouldn't matter what you did, how well you communicated, the customer is just, you know, absolutely dead loss. But the majority of the times, I think you'll find it'll be you. It'll be you because you haven't communicated, you haven't expressed or you haven't detailed the expectations to the customer of the actual job itself. A lot of contractors I see fail to communicate. And this is something I believe if you communicate well and you explain the expectations of the job, your business will succeed. Let's take some examples. We're going to mow the grass. It's long grass. And we're doing the quote and we say to the customer we're going to uh, mow the grass and take the grass away and do the edges. The customer says fine let's go. So you've done the job. The customer comes out. He's un underwhelmed. Why? Well he's expecting to have a bowling green and that's some people think like that because they've seen it. They've seen you mow lawns at the customers because they've been regularly mowed and they look beautiful but theirs doesn't. The problem was of course you haven't explained what the end product is going to be looked like. The expectation of what you uh, uh, thought about and the expectation of the customer hasn't aligned. So when you go over that job again, you've rolled up to the client, you say to them, I'm going to mow the grass, I'm going to do the edges, I'm going to take the grass away. Now, you must remember, because it's so long, I'm going to have to cut it once, twice, maybe three times, but the end product that's going to be brown, the grass is going to look pretty ordinary. It's not going to look like a bowling green. But if we regularly mow this every week or every two weeks for the next six weeks and fertilise and water, it will come up like, maybe not a bowling green, but it will come up really nice. So the customer knows when you finish the job that it's going to look brown, it's going to look ordinary. But he knows that you'll be able to attend to this over a period of time and make it look nice. See, this is what I'm trying to get to you is the expectations. You must make sure they're aligned. One thing in business is to never overpromise. Never overpromise what you're going to do because then the customer will be overwhelmed if you don't meet that expectation. So make sure that when you do provide an explanation or you do detail the expectation of the job, do it within your capabilities. Do it within your skill set. If you're starting out, my skill set won't be as good as the contract that's been doing it for 35 years. But at least tell the customer the end result will be, the grass will be done, the edges will be reasonably okay, I'm going to have to take a few times to get them right, but explain exactly what they will get at the end. Now, if you develop this relationship with the customer, they're going to like you and therefore they're going to en engage you into future work. And they'll also refer you on to other clients, other customers, because they're going to say that this guy is really genuine, he's trustworthy, he's honest, and explains. You know, the other thing is, people think that uh, I can exceed your expectations, and that's what we always try to do, good operators. But I believe by exceeding expectations is to don't give things for free. What happens if you get a couple of things for free? I'll clarify this in a minute. Once you give something for free, they'll expect more. And then the more you give, the more they'll think, is he overcharging me? That's why he's giving me things for free. You put that doubt in their mind. The only time I'll give something free is at the end of the job. So I've mowed the grass 
I've cleaned it all up, taken the grass away and it looks nice. What I might do is I might blow, blow down all the driveways in the carport or perhaps the, the pergola or the courtyard so that it all looks nice and clean rather than just the work area. So you've exceeded their expectation by just cleaning up a little bit extra. But at the same time, you haven't promised them a lot of other free things to do that. Another example, of course, is hedging. Now, this one always causes a fight between client and, and contractors. I've seen and I've heard so many stories about, I did this hedge, Jeff, and the client wasn't happy and it looked fantastic and they just weren't happy. But the, the reality was that the contractor never uh, detailed what the end product was going to look like. As we know, when we're doing, say, the client will ask for a head re hedge reduction. When we do a head re reduction, we always reduce it six to nine inches below the actual line of uh, height. In other words, all the main stems are cut down way below the actual finished height. Because when we come in with our hedger from cuts later on, we won't find we're hitting the um, main trunks of the tree, but we're only using the wispy bits that we're going to be cutting. And of course, when we do that, the actual line of the top is going to look pretty ordinary because there's only going to be a few wispy bits and pieces until the actual hedge starts to get growing again. So if that's not explained to the customer, they're underwhelmed when they come out and see it. They go, oh, I thought it'd be a little bit better than that. So show them some pictures of hedge reductions of what it looks like. This is what it looks like. I had an example a few years ago where the customer was having a wedding in their backyard. They wanted a hedge reduction to make it look nice. I showed them some pictures of what a hedge reduction will look like. And I said, in two weeks time, it's not gonna be any better. I said, oh my God, you're right. I said, well, how about we just take a couple of inches off? I said, okay, we can just take a few inches off, tidy it up and everything's nice. And then later on, we can look at a proper hedge reduction. Again, it's about communicating. It's about getting that expectation between you and your customer aligned, getting on the same page. So that's really important. And it's, you know, it's like the lemon tree example. It's full of gall wasp. You say to the customer, I'll fix that. And you go out and you cut it and there's a few sticks left. And they come out, you've killed my lemon tree. But if you'd explain to the customer, we need to cut all the gall wasp out, uh, the boulders out of the lemon tree, we need to really thin it out, um, cut it hard back, and, and it will grow back after a bit of feeding and a bit of care. And once they understand what you're going to do, you won't have a problem. Where the problem becomes between customer and uh, contractor is that level expectation. And it's because you haven't communicated. It's important to communicate with the client to, to make them feel you're interested in their property. Interested in themselves as well. Ask them about how things are going. Just little things. You don't have to know the details. But if you're showing some interest, you'll become engaged with that customer. And when you become engaged with that customer, they will trust you. They will see you as being honest. And they'll be seeing you as hardworking and a good, good contractor. And therefore, won't hesitate to engage your services in the future. And more importantly, refer you on to their friends and family, which is really important. So the moral of the story of this video is the expectations is to make sure they are aligned with the client. Thanks for watching, that's my lot for today and uh, if you're new to the channel please subscribe, really appreciate that and thank you so much for all the comments and past videos and the support that everybody's been giving me, really appreciate it so much, we'll see you on the next one, thank you, bye.